Hello YouTube, Luigi here again. Today I'm going to show you five inexpensive EDC beater knives. They're good knives, but I call them beater because if you're going to carry it, you should be willing to use it. These are not safe queens. I understand the value of a good collectible knife, and if it's precious to you, don't carry it. Leave it in your safe. Put it in the display case. Let others see how pretty it is. But if you're going to carry it, don't be afraid to use it. So I have that attitude toward all my EDCs. Now, I'm not a rich man. There are five inexpensive knives here. I got the ideas for these knives, quite honestly, from Nut and Fancy's playlist. Best EDC knives under $40. He wasn't the only one. Many others of you out there have contributed to my thinking. And I just can't remember you all right now. But I want to thank you as well. Okay. I'm going to, there are five of these. I'm going to go through them quickly. It's not going to be hyper detailed, super anal kind of review. More like an overview. There you go. First one. And the lighting. I always suffer with lighting. You hear me say it all the time. This is a Kershaw Oh So Sweet. It's got a textured handle. It's got a contoured handle. It feels good in the hand. It is speed safe assisted. Everything you'd expect from Kershaw. If I line it up with zero on my handy dandy measuring tool, you get a sense of blade length versus uh, handle length. Now I have certain criteria. I will not buy a knife that I can't get all four fingers around. I, I've learned that the hard way. I've, I bought a couple that were too short. I just I wound up just giving them away. I've learned that if it has three inch, kind of minimum three inch blade length, the handle will be fine. This has a uh, plastic back spacer. What the hell's wrong with my lighting? It has what nothing fancy calls a uh, Wizard of Oz money clip, a uh, pocket clip rather. See it? And uh, it's got a liner lock. Good, very strong spring. Sometimes I have trouble closing this. The st spring is so strong. But good knife. Good knife. Okay, that was the Kershaw Oh So Sweet. This is the Buck Vantage. Let me turn this off. You can see I'm in the shadow there from my windows. The Buck Vantage Select. This is a really nice knife. It's a lot better than I thought it would be. It's got it's uh, broad in this direction. Fills the hand. Feels good. It's got this teeny weeny, almost worthless flipper. I can't get it open all the way. It's got this decent oval uh, uh, spidey hole thing. I still can't. I, I can't get that all open in one flick either, but I like the knife. I like the blade. I like the feel. Liner lock. Open pillar construction. Flow through design. Easy to clean out. And I think the best part about it is probably the, uh, the clip. It's mounted through the top. So it is as concealable as a knife can possibly be. Now, apparently that's important to a lot of people. Who I'm with Jim Skelton on this one. Who cares if a little bit of your knife is sticking out? Like it's a secret you're carrying a knife? I mean, these aren't, you know, it's, I live, you know, up in the woods of New Hampshire, and every man carries a knife. It's no, why would you be ashamed of it? Maybe you urban folks have different attitudes. But uh, also, if it's sticking out a little bit, you got something to grab when you go to pull it out. Okay, the Buck Vantage Select. Moving on, this is an exceedingly thin knife. Very light, very easy to handle, and yet it's got some blade and some length to it. I wouldn't have bought it if it didn't. This is the Kershaw Chill. Uh, not speed assisted, but if I do it right, I can get it to open in one, in one uh, attempt. It's got a liner lock. Uh, I would say three-quarter uh, closed uh, back, back spacer and uh, very thin, very light. If you want something to feel that it's almost not in your pocket at all, this is probably it. Really good. Really good. Okay. This. Whoa. Do I love this blade or what? This is the CRKT Hey-Ho. H-E-I-H-O. It's got 
Japanese. How can I get you to see this? It's got Japanese characters on the handle. It's got a thumb disc. And this is the strongest spring assist I've ever felt. Practically knocks the thing out of your hand. If you look at the blade, you'll recognize a samurai-ish type shape. Hence the Japanese name, hence the Japanese characters. If I put it on zero, you can get a sense of its handle length versus its blade length. This is a honey of a knife. This is a honey of a knife. I, I, I love the blade shape, and uh, this this practically knocks it out of my hand. It opens with such force. Reversible pocket clips tip uh, up carry, and on the side where you're not using the clip, there's this little plate that comes out so you don't have two gaping holes there where the clip might be. I like this knife. The CRKT hey ho and remember none of these are expensive now today's knife in the rotation is uh, an interesting knife it's a uh, Hershaw cross and if it uh, if it didn't have a thumb stud and had a nail nick if it didn't have a liner lock but had a back lock this would look like any old-time slip joint friction folder it's got polished micarta handles it's got good heft, big bolster. It's got a thumb stud. Again, I can't open these things in one flick. I don't know if I have a weak thumb or if these knives are so new yet that they're still stiff. And a liner lock. Um, in terms of length, you can see for yourselves, blade length versus handle length. I like this knife. So that's it. These are five. They're inexpensive. I carry them. I use them. They're, remember I said inexpensive, which means it doesn't cost a lot. Cheap, on the other hand, means something flimsy, shoddily built, not good quality. So that's the difference, and I think it's important to use the right word. These are inexpensive EDCs. I like them, and uh, I want to thank Nothing Fancy for uh, showing me where to go for inexpensive EDC knives under $40. All right, that's it. Brief look at five different knives. God bless you. I love you all. Bye.